Let's hey there, everybody, and welcome to Let's Develop. I'm Chris Woolley, and I'm going to be your host for this series. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. This is a webinar series where we bring in awesome professionals and we talk photography and we're just sharing information and having a good time. So it's a pretty fun setup. I uh, do want to give a shout out to American Color Imaging uh, for sponsoring this show. And if this is your first time joining, we meet every two weeks and basically just bring in super cool photographers. We share information, insights, and uh, just learn and grow. Um, so we do have a chat button that's down on the side. So if at any point you have questions during this program, put it into chat and I'll ask Marissa live so we can get some answers on what we're doing. So uh, if you missed the last episode, we were going over off-camera flash, and I was actually your speaker for that one. So if you want to know about how off-camera flash works, what different groups and channels and which modifiers you should use and all that fun stuff, uh, definitely check out that replay. It's live right now on ACI's website, acilab.com slash let's dash develop. Okay, so now here's what we're here for. We've got Marissa, and Marissa, we can't see your face on this one, along with your beautiful work that's on here. So uh, if you don't know Marissa, uh, she's a ton of fun. Uh, she's, uh, let's see what her bio says officially, believes in bold, independent, original thought daily, and living her life unapologetically. She's a self-taught professional photographer of 15 years and a lifelong artist. Uh, she's out of Meriden, Connecticut, and has a photo studio, The Sassy Space, which is the center of her sassy mouth photo creativity. Marissa continues to reinvent and evolve her brand, constantly climbing higher and pushing boundaries along the way. In 2020, she received her craft and photographic degree from PPA and has been acknowledged by the American Society of Photographers with the first ever superstar pin. And I've gotten to work with Marissa through ASP and she is awesome and very much uh, deserving that uh, superstar pin because uh, she does some amazing social media work as well. She also loves music festivals, her family, great lipstick, uh, evidently uh, nice nails as well, too, and boxed wine. <laughs> and she believes in the power of education and is an eager student, uh, always wanting to learn more. So, uh, Marissa, welcome. Hey. <laughs> So uh, we've got some uh, personal branding that we're going to be going over today. And we've got yes, the personal branding, definitely. not just normal, but with sass. And uh, if we're judging by your, oh, your yeah. outfit, uh, um, so this is what you wear all the time, right? Not just for Halloween? Only when I'm in the sassy space. Only in the sassy space. You got to have your, your wand and baton yeah. going on. <laughs> yeah. This is my go-to uniform um, for all work down in the studio. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love yeah. it. Well, let's jump in. Uh, what do you got to share with us today? Okay. Oh, we're going to do sassy mouth personal branding today. I'm very excited about this whole thing. Thank you, Chris Woolley, for having me. Thank you, ACI. Mark Lane, I love you. <laughs> also, Ken Wilson, I love you. So, oh, hi, everybody. Thank you for coming this evening and hanging out with me. I am Marissa Valetti Lavoy, Queen of Sass. Tonight I am the Princess Queen of Darkness coming to you from Meriden, Connecticut. And we're going to be talking about personal branding. Very important because we live in a world where everyone can be their own special marketable brand. We're going to talk about that. This is my brand, Sassy Mouth. My tagline, bold, independent, sassy. I even have this in the bio that Chris just beautifully read for me. Thank you very much. Because that those three words absolutely describe my brand. And I make sure to hit them in their face with it every time that I can, every time possible when working professionally. So what is personal branding? A personal brand is everything that you really are plus everything that people believe you to be. So this is your authentic real self combined with the public's perception of who you are. And you are the only one of you there ever was and that there ever will be. You are special AF. So we're going to market that. It's true. You're the only one. You. It's it we're, the you're the only yeah. magical you. You're the original, man. So 
Um, 2017, I had built my Sassy Mouth brand up really high locally. And I had a great following. I had wonderful clients, great word of mouth business, but I was stuck in my business. I didn't know how to get to where I wanted to get to next, especially regarding public speaking, um, growing higher as a professional, everything that I wanted to do. I was stuck in this brand I had made because I know a lot of photography businesses have their own name as their brand. But it's easy to even get stuck in that. So I was stuck in my sassy mouth. And um, I went to Connecticut PPA in our business summit. And this guy, Jeff Yoakum, gets up and he starts talking. And I know he's just the realist I had been looking for to really be able to, to conquer my myself, to, to talk to me and make me force myself to come out and look at the business I had built and where I really wanted to go. So I always give him credit for unsticking me. Hugely important to my growth. We would meet every, every two weeks and like, I would be crying on these, these conferences. And he is, he's just wonderful about, about realistic branding and especially creative entrepreneurs. So get his books. He doesn't teach privately anymore, but he's absolutely wonderful. So big ups to Jeff Yoakum. And he forced me to do what is the hardest thing for a lot of us to do. And that is talk about yourself. We can talk about our clients. We can talk about our family, work, things that we're doing. But to talk about our personal selves, very hard to do. But we're going to do that in this program. To do that, we have to ask bold questions. And Chris, if you ever want to answer any of these in real time, please do. If not, answer them in your own time and answer them honestly. Yeah, let's. So, what is your favorite? What is your favorite part of your job? Let's put that into uh, the chat. What's something that you enjoy doing? Put it in there, and I'll read them to Marissa. Yes, I love. Yeah, that. let's be interactive yes. here. What is your favorite favorite part of your job? I love interactive here. Thank yeah, you. I love the uh, the meeting Usually with uh, I get, people. I get some. Oh, Justin enjoys teaching some others. <laughs> yeah, he likes uh, oh, drinking glasses of red wine. I'm not sure if that's part of his job. Oh, my but, uh, God. If it is, <laughs> I'm jealous. Yeti. Yeti. <laughs> but if that is, okay, but if that is his real favorite, then he needs to look at a client that that's their favorite. So that's where we're getting with these questions. If he's being funny, there's there's truth in, in humor. Okay. So like, I also enjoy it. My clients are a little bit older now because a lot of my fun things that I like to do don't match with a younger client. So like answers like that, it, it, they can be absolutely right. What do you do better than anyone else? Let's see, so it, put into chat, what do you do better than anything else? We still have a bunch of answers that what came do you in do from better? The, the previous one. So uh, I would love to hear some photographing of at the beach at sunset, creating painted portraits with people, uh, fall in love, um, Photoshop apps, making people happy, creative concepts, uh, helping clients see the best in them, uh, working with disabled veterans, Whoa. um, doing the best. Uh, we've got Luis, my clients bring, uh, being tears, bringing tears uh, to their eyes, uh, making photographs darker than usual. Michael, uh, Justin, connecting with clients. Carolyn, make people feel relaxed and happy with themselves. You got some good answers. Oh, coming those through are here. beautiful answers. Beautiful answers. And start and write them down for yourself too. Not like I don't know if Chris sends out the chat, but write them down while we're doing this because these are all going to add up to something. Beautiful answers, though. I love who said what was their the better than they do anyone else was fall in love or what their favorite part of their job is falling in love. It's so that's so sweet. Love should be a central part of their brand. If that's their honest first answer, that's, that's great answers. What topics can you talk endlessly about? So lots of things that we can be putting on here. We can go through them because we're going to have just endless chat if we do that one. <laughs> <laughs> we got live. We got okay. heritage. If you received an award, what would it be for? <laughs> the superstar. 
superstar award. I know. Is that a true. Boston accent there? What are your <laughs> superstar? Well, I'm I'm mid I'm mid New England, so I can go anyway okay. anytime. Flexible. You gotta watch out for me. <laughs> <laughs> your top three pet peeves. And this is something that people either struggle with or they'll just come flooding. And like I have a thousand pet peeves and and more come all the time. But some people really struggle at what what admitting what irks them. If you won the lottery and you didn't need to work, what would you do? And what sets you apart from your colleagues? And what is your biggest hope or dream? So many great answers coming in from Carolyn asking how much That's is an eight wonderful. Or Louise saying uh, clients comparing on the cost of digitals. Uh, Michael traveling all over. Diana travel. <laughs> Tammy, number one, don't be negative. Number two, don't be negative. Number three, don't be negative. I love it. <laughs> Yeti building beautiful mm -hmm. dream studio. Yes. We're working on the same path from Robert. Diana having a happy, happy, healthy family. We got some good answers here. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love that they're so willing to answer. That's my favorite part. Thank you. So if we answer all these questions honestly, and really honestly, then we start to create our authentic brand persona. I put myself in front of my people all the time. I connect with them. These are in my studio or out and about where I've dragged my cam ranger, my tripod, my light, whatever it may be out or it's mostly in my studio. I try not to go outside and embarrass myself too often, but I take self portraits and express who I am inside. And I make sure to publish them so that my people are able to connect with me on that level. This is who I am. I'm all these people. Even when I'm publishing from my phone, from Instagram or whatever, day-to-day -day life, I am still projecting my brand out constantly. I'm still showing myself and connecting with my humans, my clients, my fans, my followers, my people, my stalkers, because they people connect to people. And I used to get lost in my brand and I would let them call me sassy. And I let a, a select few call me sassy still, but I try to correct people because when I was sassy, I was not Marissa. So now I have distinguished myself as Marissa, the queen of sass. And I sign my correspondence like this when I'm posting on social media. If I'm posting for myself on social media, I always sign XOXO Marissa or XO Marissa, queen of sass whatever it may be, so that my people know it's from me. It's from me sentimentally. It's from my heart. If I don't want it to be from me, I, I, I send it anonymous, anonymously into the internet. So this has given me a lot of freedom to connect with my people on a personal level. Because people connect with people. And you really don't have to choose between building a personal brand and a company brand. You can absolutely build both at the same time. What are the benefits of a personal brand? This is my um, personal brand layer, in case you couldn't see all the sass around me. A personal brand builds trust. There is nothing more attractive than honest and authentic. And when you are building a personal brand, Based on who you actually are, you cannot be anything but honest and authentic. That's why we answered those first questions to help start to build this real, true persona that is based in who you really are. A personal brand positions you as a thought leader in your industry. You're the go to. You're the go-to person that people want to ask about certain things when you're building your brand right. It also helps you find your people, find your right peeps, your right clients, the right people that you want to work with. Because it goes both ways. You want to work with them. 
they want to work with you, that's your perfect person. Book a good, strong brand is a clear voice, a strong message, makes it easier for your people to find you and to connect to your brand. And you attract those clients. Once you're the thought leader, once they found you, it's going to roll over into the perfect client. You're the go-to expert in your niche. They'll be attracted to that. And you can also start to charge premium pricing. It's a specialty item now. You're the thought leader. You have the right clients. They all want you. Absolutely, you're a specialty item. You have to raise your prices once you become the, a, a specialty brand like that. And you create a strong base. As your business evolves, you'll still have a solid brand foundation. My brand is absolutely different than it was. It's different every day. I still have a really strong base that I've built on it because it's it's me. It's who I am, honestly, authentically. So we're going to build the foundation and talk about your legacy words. So your legacy words are three words you want to be remembered by. These are three words you'd want talked about after you're gone. And there's rules to these words. Oh, crap. I pressed my buttons. They can't have a direct negative. What do I mean by direct negative? It can't be happy. It's sad. It can't be fun because it's downer. It can't be something that triggers the human mind to ask why because they will. And if you say you're honest, right away we go, why do they have to say they're honest? Are they dishonest? And it's just it's just human nature to question. So your legacy words cannot have a direct negative. Everything has a negative if you search hard enough for it. But what I'm trying to say here is we're going deeper than the surface. It also can't be a propaganda word. So this can't be a word that would be used to hoodwink the masses. I'm not looking for compassionate or passionate at all. Um, no trustworthy, you know, anything of those sorts. I want, I want deeper than that. And if you do happen to think of a word that is a more surface level word, or you can't think of the direct negative, Go to thesaurus.com, <laughs> put your words in, and start to work through them. And when you start to work through them and you start to get to a place that is very specific to who you are or, or spark something in you, then you have you have gone to that next deeper level and you're starting to think of yourself in words as a brand. After you have your top three. And if anybody would like to shout out a top three, I wouldn't mind it. But it's a really, really, like, it, I was lucky. I had a built-in one. I had sassy. It's, it's, it's a hard task. After we have our top three, we're going to start to develop a vocabulary from it. You have your top three. We're going to look for three synonyms from each word. Same exact rules, no direct negative, no propaganda word. It, when we're done, we should have about 12 workable, perfectly branded words that we can use in our marketing, that we can use in our social media posts, we can always use in our dialogues, in our bios, that we can always use when we're at when we're looking for words to describe ourselves, our work, our place in this crazy world of the internet and business. So my words were super vague and I use these all the time. They were fabulous because Tyra Banks used fabulous on top model. I thought it would work for me. <laughs> magical because that's what I am and Disney had magical and why wouldn't I be magical and beautiful. And those are wonderful, but they're not specific to my brand. I still use those sometimes. I really try not to use fabulous. I try to be a recovering, beautiful, overusing addict, but 
I I mean I use magical in a hashtag now and sassy ma sassy mouth magic. So I still use them here and there, but now I'm using these perfectly suited brand words. My top three words, bold, independent, sassy. Saw them right at the beginning of the program, right in my bio. And bold, absolutely. Bold is everything I do. Independent, I wasn't sure about. I really wasn't. I It took me a lot of staring at it. And then coming to the realization that the independent stood for bold, independent, free thinking, doing, coming up with an idea and going straight towards it without stopping and just having this, this independent spirit to create. That's absolutely my brand. I thought this afternoon, I'm going to dress up like a devil for this program. And here I am. So, and then sassy, sassy was built in. And really, I thought that that was the one that I loved the most. But when it comes down to it, it's absolutely that independent. It's that center word because that's everything that my business stands for. Underneath that, I have original, fresh, fiery, flirty, spirited, playful. And there's ones that I work in depending on the on the subject or whatever it is. There's things that I haven't really gone like peculiar is one of my words. Absolutely. And I have to I've started to bring that in here and there. I'm always messing with the vocabulary and trying to go deeper with it. But I use these words as hashtags too in my content while I'm, when I'm posting, because this is my brand and I want it to come up in front of my people all the time. I want them to see these words and think of me, not just sassy. Obviously they're going to think of me and they see that, but all of this combined equals what I'm, what my brand is and who I stand for or who I am, what my business is for. Oh, we're doing so good. Um, everything I'm doing here is what I really have my personal branding clients do in real time. We go through all these activities. I don't do any personal branding photo shoot without completion of all these activities because this is how I get to that final product of their personal branding photo shoot. So it's a lot of a lot of brain work before we get to the photo shoot but it's totally worth it, especially this exercise. So a vision board. A lot of people have made them. I ask my clients to make it specifically for this photo shoot. I don't care if they made one. I don't care if they have 300 of them. I don't care if they don't want to make it. They have to make it for this photo shoot. And this is how I'm going to get out of their heads how they really want this to be shot because I'm doing a personal branding. I'm invested in this. I want to deliver them perfect visual for their brand. So I give them homework. First thing, the vocabulary that we just worked on. Second thing, a vision board. I don't give them any sort of guidelines for this. The only guidelines I give them, I don't, I mean, I don't tell them dimension. I don't tell them how they have to build it. I just tell them they have to make it with the intention of this photo shoot. And it has to be physical. I don't want a Pinterest board. I don't want a, I, I want a physical something. There's something to be said to connecting thought to hand to paper to me that is hugely valuable. So I make sure to ask them to really make this a real thing. I want them to spend time on it. This is a big deal. This could be huge for their company if they're willing to put their effort into it. So they come back two or three weeks. I have procrastinators. I try not to make it go past two weeks, but they'll try to push it to a month because this is it's hard work. It's hard work. So what we're looking at here is a collage of multiple boards that have come back to me. But in the center, where we're going to focus is, is one of my clients. And she is a JP. So she trains people. She works for some online Justice of the Peace training company where they get their license. 
she wants to know how to go up in this company, whatever it may be. So we go through the program and she brings me back to this vision board. And I'm looking at this vision board and I see food and travel and the greatest showman and escape and get me out of here. I'm a survivor and anything. There's nothing to do with being a justice of the peace. That there's one little tiny picture of people getting married at the top, right in the middle. Um, and I, I don't know how to tell my client that she's really showing me that she doesn't want to do the job that we're doing this branding for. So she comes back a couple of weeks later. This is how I plan the photo shoot too. I mean, this is visually how, if this is what stimulates her, this is how I want to shoot it. So I, when she came back for, she's in here and makeup. I had planned to do the greatest showman shot. We we're going to go to the vineyard after to get some outside stuff. Um, lots of cute little, little cool things, but like no couples. <laughs> there was no couple going to be here at all. And she didn't want any of that. So she was sitting in the chair, getting her hair and makeup done. And she's like, Marissa, I've been thinking about it. And I don't really think I want my job. I'm like, oh yeah, you think? Like, of course you don't, crazy. You, you put it down on paper. You don't want your job. So she's been working about, about the idea and about how I distinguish myself. I've given myself the title of Queen of Sass. And she wants to just start to do these um, fancy, like, like secret supper parties in her backyard in Glastonbury, Connecticut, where her daughters have live chickens and they're going to her One of them's a, a chef. They're going to have these secret parties and she's going to be the chairman of the board, make these elaborate charcuterie boards. And she really has gone and done this. And it's from taking it out of her head and putting it on this paper like this that she was at, she was able to see visually as well as I was able to see visually that she was not in the right place that she wanted to be. So now she's the chairman of the board of the Bold Platter, which is a really cool name. And she makes these great little dinner parties and you got to know some people to get to them. So vision boards are hugely important, especially for us. We're visuals. We are photographers. We're artists. We need to see to understand. I can't mind read them more than I'm already doing. Please put it down on the paper. And I did a full day in Massachusetts and we all did this in real time. The night before I had been, I was going to make a sample one, but when I was doing mine, I felt like I was stealing really good stuff from my students and I didn't want to take all the good stuff. And I only got about halfway done and when I went up to the hotel room later that night, I looked at it and it's it's where I want to go. It's where I've gone from then. And it's I can't believe that it came out, out of my head just like that. So if you, even if you're stuck, do a vision board and keep your brand in mind for it and do it with a, a goal of this is going to represent your brand. Not a lot of pressure. Don't pressure yourself. It'll be very natural, I promise. Get magazines, cut them up, make yourself a vision board. Oh, how are we doing, Chris? Yeah, Good. we're great. We're about halfway through. Okay, good. About halfway through. That's cool. So colors and marketing are so important. Right now, I'm throwing down bold, youthful excitement with the red. I use red in my marketing quite a bit. I'm on a little break from my red lips right now in my marketing, but I'm going to make a comeback with it. And also, red signals clearance sales, which I don't want. So I balance the red with neutral white and professional black. Everything that you do with your color scheme matters hugely. Chris has a beautiful blue wall behind him. That blue wall mixed with the Captain America emblem <laughs> signifies trust, strength, dependable. 100%. I noticed it as soon as he got in the video that he is giving me full on superhero, dependable, and um, also kind of a secret genius vibes with his whole color scheme. So how you mix these also matters a lot. McDonald's, back in the day, the interiors of their restaurant were yellow and red. And that was to 
create a mood of anxiety so that you would eat their food and move along fast because it was fast food. Combining those two absolutely triggers something in us that is uncomfortable. There is a wedding billboard for a place down the highway and they used a red background with yellow writing and I could not stop talking about how wrong it was to use a combination like that as far as um, selling to a wedding, a wedding clientele. Nothing about that would make somebody feel like, oh, I want to get married there. So your your combinations are very important as far as your color scheme and your brand and be aware of them. I love purple. I tried to use purple for so long. I feel like purple connects to my artist soul. It just didn't work for my for my brand. I had to eliminate my sad little purple flower. <laughs> and so uh, like it, you might want a color, it just might not vibe with the whole thing because you have to be conscious of how the color message is being delivered to your people. Oh, choosing your audience. It's so hard to come to terms with as a photographer. Back in the day, I specialized in everything. If I had a camera, I would work. You got a kid, you got a baby, you got anything on a mat. I will show up there and I will do the job. And I was terribly unhappy in my business. And now I know why. Because not everyone is your dream client. And in order to attract your right clients, you must be willing to deter ones that you don't want to work with. And that is hard. That was hard for me to realize that not everyone was my potential client because I definitely tried to appeal to everyone. But now my client is professional adults, mostly women, my age plus or minus decades. My my age range for women, it, I say a decade or so, but honestly, it's all women, all ages. and. That's about it. That's my dream client. That's who I relate to the best. That's who I want to see in my studio the most. <sighs> but coming to the realization that my message would not reach everyone's soul was so hard, but it's fine. It's fine because you are just trying to reach your brand soulmate. And we're going to do a question questionnaire just like we did before to determine our brand soulmate profile what is their age what is their gender and i'm not saying i don't have non female customers absolutely i do but when i think of being excited to go to work and coming into my studio and not dreading it at all. I mean, I had panic attacks before some newborn photo shoots back in the day. And I, like, the, here's your sign that you shouldn't be doing this. When I know it's a professional adult female woman coming in here, I have no problem. None at all. Even even teenage girls though, yeah, and little girls, but like I try not to do a lot of family stuff anymore because I'm crazy. What is their education? Education matters. What is their relationship status? One of my brand clients, strictly divorcees. She's a divorce lawyer. Her brand soulmate profile has been through a divorce. Absolutely important, their relationship status. What is their income in their profession? And what are their dreams and their goals? And what do they struggle with? And what prevents them from a achieving their goals. 
So we take all those questions, answer them honestly, authentically, realistically for you, not for what you think you should answer. Answer these honestly. And we come to an offer that your clients can't refuse. We take the answers from before our authentic brand persona with our perfect client that we just determined who it was. You position yourself as a specialist, not a generalist. You take what you love to do, what you love to do, what you do best, what your client wants, what that brand persona we just determined, what they want, and we create a perfect offer. And this is an offer that they cannot refuse. Your perfect client is out there. There's so many people in the world. I looked it up the other day, a number, and it's just the most outrageous number in the world. Your perfect client is out there. You have to put yourself out there to connect with them. What do you do? What do you do? This question, what do you do? You should be able to answer confidently in a sentence or two. So I suppose it's what we call call an elevator pitch, but you should be able to answer this confidently. So what do you do? Chris, what do you do? I do uh, commercial headshots. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. Boom. Perfect. Carolyn Boom. says she creates I'm so proud joy. of you. Oh my God. This is so vague, Carolyn. I love it. How, but we need to know how you create joy. You know, like Santa creates joy. I'm creating joy right now. How do you create joy? What do you do? I spoke, I spoke to an association. And they all answered, they captured people. And I was like, with a net? You can't say you capture people. That's so crazy. So you have to be able to say, what do you do? Confidently. This is hugely important in your brand. I am a bold, original, multi, I'm wearing the same dress, multimedia artist who helps like-minded people establish their personal brand legacies. And Settling on multimedia artists was really hard for me. I absolutely love being a photographer, but I love all aspects of my business. And I really do have a hugely dimensional business that I'm running here. So multimedia artists, absolutely. And I love to help like-minded people establish their branding legacies. And I'm so happy to say this confidently to people. This is right on my website. It's like the second scroll down and I smack them with what do I do? Because they need to know what I do and why why they're there. Because your website is so important. Your social media presence is important, but your website is the only thing that you will have total control of. Total control of. Zuckerberg does not have anything to do with your website. So make it good. Because visiting your website isn't most likely a step. It is a step a potential client will take. If a client gets to a website that is not functioning, that looks like it was made in 1998, any sort of misstep at all, they're going to close that browser and move right along. They have not found where they're supposed to be. People's attention span is split second. Your website is so important. Because first impressions are everything and you want to make them feel like they've come to the right place immediately because they're going to move along. Your website must have professional logo at the top. What do you do? I love to hit them with that right away. Chris says commercial headshots. Oh my gosh, what's better than that? He's going to have a million. If that's what he does, they're going to be lying in the block because it's wonderful. They just wanted the answer. The question answered right away. Professional photography, if you're a professional photographer, social proof, testimonials, publications you've been featured in, a call to action. If you have them on your website, try to get them to sign up for a, a something 
a mailing list. Mine, mine has a mailing list pop up. That's the best I can do. At least I'm doing it. Um, your products, your services, a contact page, and an about you page. About you, not your business, not all your accolades, who you are as a person. Because your clients need to see and know about you. The About You page is an opportunity to connect with your clients on a personal level before they come in, before they do the booking link, before they do whatever they're going to do to proceed with you. This is where you can become best friends before they get there. And they can also know if they're the right, if you're the right for them, if they're the right for you, if they're if it's all going to work. This is the perfect a perfect client match from your about page. So this is how we write this magical about page that speaks to you and not just your business. You can have a about my business page. That's fine. But we're going to just talk about you as a human. Strengths and weaknesses. Three to five beliefs. Things you really believe in. Strong core beliefs and values. Um, this one was hard for me. I felt like everything was very Miss America wavy, but three to five indulgences, guilty pleasures and indulgences, I had thousands. So you had need a balance. We need a balance here. We need to connect people to who we really are and then also connect them to our things that make us humans that put that connect uh, each other like humans that we all have these these indulgences, these guilty pleasures. So my about page starts with my starts with my credo. I believe in bold, independent thought daily because that is where the real freedom is. I live my life exactly how I want to, and I never apologize for it. And that's 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 who I am. I mean, there's no other sentence that could describe it. Then I go into into the the stuff, the stuff that makes humans humans and connect to each other. My closet is a museum of clothes I have collected. The clothes I actually wear are piled next to my bed. True story. I believe in putting my makeup on for myself to look glamorous because I want to. I love music festivals, great lipsticks, dancing like a fool. I believe in the right to blow out my own birthday candles because I have lived those years, burn those candles, go blow out your own damn candles. And there are photographs of me like pushing kids' faces away from my birthday cake. Because those are my candles. And that is how I'm going to connect with my real people. Somebody who gets a kick out of that, they're the right client for me. I believe in art for my sake. I don't need a therapist now. Art is therapy. Heals my soul. Helps me not be a horrible human. I love making a mess in the storage room in the sassy space for months and months. So I'm buried alive by my own crap. I believe in documenting every bit of my life however I can, because even if one person is interested in knowing my story, someday after I'm gone, they will be able to. I'm a social media addict. I check my stuff relentlessly. I never measure when I'm cooking, just toss things in and hope for the best. This results in me being a horrible baker, but I'm a great cook. I believe in talking to random strangers because you never... Hold on. Because you never know where there's a new thought, life lesson, or best friend hiding. I believe in super cheese smiling until my face hurts. Tuesday is 30% off senior day at Savers. My mom and I go and shop like quarters. We secretly, but not so secretly, are. I believe everyone has the power to create magic because I've done it myself. And then I do my sign off and go into links where they can learn a little bit more about my business. But this about you, page, I'm telling them about me. It's a wonderful opportunity to make best friends with your clients before they even get there. So you utilize your about you page and really tell them about you. On your homepage, five to 10 images. They are not going to look at more than that. Five to 10 images on that main homepage should be your strongest personal brand message. And then we create the content. We create it for articles. 
create it for blogs, for our photos, our videos, our podcasts, webinars, online courses, PDF guides, slideshows, all sorts of places to put this wonderful branded content we're going to create. And being a photographer, we have great opportunity to create the, the content that we need to have these successful brands. Honestly, we know how to use those cameras. And you post it on your, your website. Oh, it's kind of the same. I don't know why I have that. I'm crazy. So we focus on quality and consistency, especially when posting it online. This is one of my branding clients. She's a little cuckoo before we went through the program using a lot of stock photos from Rodan and Fields. And afterwards, we talked about color blocking. We talked about keeping her tonality the same. She stopped using stock stuff she started creating her own along with our photo shoots together mixing it all up so she uses like pops of orange pops of red always blue always cream always like skincare colors with other bright colors mixed in because on instagram we're looking for a very beautiful cohesive feed this is another branding client renee bauer before we went through the process she was a little all over the place. There were like so many storylines running here. We kind of just want to show the one storyline that you're trying to sell at the time. And she does color blocking beautiful. She is an author. She's a lawyer. So she mixes the text in with the quotes all in her brand colors. And her feeds look beautiful. That's what keeps somebody on your Instagram is a beautiful feed like that. So she gets it. She gets what what the, the visual translated through the brand and how to use it on her social media. So this is a little sneaky peek of my branding PDF that I send to my clients. My personal branding really took over when I stopped doing weddings because weddings really doesn't fit in my brand anymore, even though I built my business on them, just not where I saw my soul. So I needed something to fill that though. You can't get rid of something like that and not have a business, you know, a little something to take it over. So the personal branding has really replaced that wedding income for me. And the tagline for my shoots is a bold investment towards a successful business. That's a great line. I mean, I would be interested in that. Tell, please tell me. Right away, I have client testimonies. I want my clients to tell my future clients that this is more than a photo shoot. This is something that maybe changed their life because it really does. It, it changes both our lives to go through this process. Every time I go with a through the branding with a new client, it's it's just learning for everybody. It's amazing. So that I have client testimonies. The experience was beyond our expectations. Created energy was like yes, lead to our fire. I want my clients to talk about that. I can't explain what happens in the in the personal branding experience better than they can. And then they want to start coming back because they're little addicts. I won't take a personal branding photo shoot unless they've gone through the whole experience. And they need they need touch ups. I've done two personal branding touch ups this week, so they sign on for quarterly refreshes. And I mean, sometimes, sometimes the quarters turn into have and whatever, whatever, but it's a great way for me to catch up with my clients again, make sure to keep them as my clients. And we do a little, you know, where are you, where are you in your business? How are things going? So they get kind of a little business coaching. We make it perfect. We make it perfect. So I have three practices packages brand one consultation with me photo shoot consultation we can do it in person or zoom and that includes in my studio or the park like i have a park right out in front 15 high resolution images 1500 two is the same deal in studio but for the use on location Consultation with me in the studio. In the studio park on location 50 high res. So the thing about the this is that I'm I block my whole day for these photo shoots. 
I am crafting the most perfect photo shoot possible for my clients. I let them bring as many outfits as they want, as many little props, things that say things, any of that sort of stuff, because I want to make hundreds of pictures that are perfect for them. I want them to be screaming about how they love them all and they want all of them because I want them to buy all of them. And when you've created 200 perfect branded photos for somebody, they are not settling with 15, 30, or 50 usually. They're buying a lot more. So I'm definitely getting them on the upsell on the digital images. This is the only thing that I sell digital images outright for because this is what they are coming to me for. We are we are making content for the internet. We are making stuff for their channels, for every every direction that they need it. This is all, all digital images here. And then I finish with, you are more than a headshot alone. You're an entire marketable universe of awesome. Are you ready to invest in the success of your business? And generally, by the time they've gotten here, they are absolutely ready to invest in the success of their business. And they want to come work with me and go through this process. Wow. That's a lot of information. <laughs> this is my last thing. If you don't give the market the story to talk about, they'll define your brand story for you. And that is absolutely the truth. If you don't give them the storyline, they'll make up their own or they won't talk about you at all. So definitely seize the opportunity to create your own story. I certainly do every single day. This is my brand, Sassy Mouth. And Marissa Bloody Lavoy. find me on the internet. And I love you yeah. all. <laughs> and I'm going to be uh, emailing out everybody you. your contact information, <laughs> as well as a, a link to your Instagram and uh, uh, website so that uh, they can stalk you properly. But uh, let's uh, go ahead and give away some prizes because uh, we love giving away prizes, right? So uh, oh, up first, wonderful. we've got a $50 oh, good. lab credit to Ooh. ACI. So let's see who's winning that one. $50 lab credit. And it is spinning, spinning, spinning. <laughs> and we have Melissa. Congratulations, Melissa, on that one. My pen's not ready. I gotta. Okay. Woo! There we go. All right. So now we're up to our next prize, which is a $75 lab credit. So $75 lab credit. And let's spin that I one. I won it. And we're at Mary Jo. Congratulations, Mary Jo. All right. So now we got our grand prize, a $100 lab credit. And let's see who's winning this one. Woo! And we've got Robin. Awesome. So if you weren't one of the, the lucky winners on there, you still get a prize. We've got uh, a special from ACI. It's 25% off any one order that's done through ACI Flex. Um, so uh, make sure that uh, we're using the special code that's on there. And that does expire next month. But write that one down uh, for the holidays. You're definitely going to want to have that one uh, available. Also want to let you know about our upcoming guests. We've got Rick Avalos going over photography, marketing, and sales. Ooh. Registration is live on that one, so be sure to check it out. And of course, if you have ideas for future episodes, things that you'd love to see on here, or recommendations for guests, shoot me an email, hello at cwoolly.com. Uh, that's how we come up with this content. It's all based around you and what you want to learn. All right, Mar Marissa, that was a lot, a lot of fun. Is that a tail that's wagging right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that is too fun. So uh, any parting thoughts for us? <laughs> On uh, when it comes to your personal brand and and doing it and being effective on there, take action. Do it. Yeah, you have to make it happen. Nobody else will sell you better than yourself. You know yourself the best. You have to do it. If you want, if you want a, a brand like that, I mean, it's it's out there. It's just how much do you want it? How much do you want to do it? <laughs> and um, find me on the internet. You know. Yeah, connect, connect. <laughs> Definitely the social butterfly there.
I try. All right. Well, that's officially a wrap for tonight, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you, Marissa. It was a ton of fun. Uh, we learned a lot about personal branding. Thanks, Chris. And, and uh, you do live up to your, your personal brand. So <laughs> that was a lot of fun. <laughs> All right. Have a great night, everybody. Oh, good. I try.